Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 1 versus 1 on Tranquility's End. Playing on the northern side as the far side Enclave, we have got Cosmos. Playing on the southern side as the Vestorian Firstborn, we have got Nox. Nox will be opening up a Tech Priest engine seeing a triple Vestorian Hunters and the Vestorian Barracks, whereas Cosmos is going to go for a couple of patrol teams, a extra Earthcast Builder, and a Enclave's Council. Now, funny old me, I recorded a 3v3 uh, that featured the Farsight Enclave, and then I saw this 1v1 with Farsight Enclave. So, I've, I've done a little bit of an explanation in how this faction works in that video. I thought I may as well record this and then upload this one first, because I think in my head it makes more sense to see a 1v1 with this faction in before 3v3, so everyone's not confused as what they do. So, very exciting stuff. So, if you've not seen the big 3 hour long quick look, which I know it was... Not the quickest of looks, but I'll, I shall have, have a quick explanation of these guys. Now, so we've got the far, we've got the Enclave Council and the Orbital Landing Flare. Essentially, these two buildings work in tandem, and you can summon forth a hero, and then that hero then can summon forth a blooming Orca Transport, which then spouts off different units and stuff. And there's plenty of units and heroes for them to summon in uh, this, this game here. We do see the patrol team, quite weedy, but are able to be upgraded with a whole bunch of good stuff later on as the game goes on, especially in Tier 2. I'm going to attempt to shirk off this Tech Priest Engine who's building up a cheeky Sentry Turret outside of one of their natural strategic points. And the Farsight Enclave definitely need to make sure they capture as many of these guys as they can, as they've got a very poor economy. I mean, they do get a little bit of an economic boost when the Orca transports land. Yeah, the key for these guys is that when they summon a uh, unit, the transport comes down, and when the transport comes down, their economy goes up just a smidgen. And, you know, the longer the thing is there for, the more economic be benefit they get. Like, there you go. Goes up a little bit. And also get, that's how they get their green money as well. You see Commander Aracon coming out. The ranged tier one hero for the Fast Enclave. The choice between him with his long range AoE damage or the close combat single target damage Farsight, uh, well, Commander Farsight himself. They'll be coming out for a defensive posture. Seeing if they could take care of the sentry gun. Where Vasa Squad is also another capping unit that's available for the Farsa Enclave. Uh, quite good in close combat, quite good at range as well. But they get the uh, tier, well, they get the higher tier weapons after a couple of upgrades. And they're all dead now. So that's quite sad for them. So this sentry gun, quite, quite good. <laughs> Doing uh, the God Emperor's work there. Oh, kind of attempting to kill. These Vestorian Hunters, long-range, beefy lads, but quite fragile themselves, especially when they're up against a huge piece of Tau Tech on the go. A critical location being captured as well as these guys. So, okay, well, if you've got our natural, we'll take yours in return. Although it's, exact, it's not exactly winning this engagement, is he? That sentry gun being repaired by a Tech Priest engine seer. Although, once he gets the distance... Oh, no. Will he die? Don't want to lose a commander super early for the fast Enclave, as this is where you get your recruitment potential here. And without them, well, you've only got Gwe Vassar and patrol teams to work with. And they're all right for the for the initial opening acts of the game, but very quickly do you need to get something more substantial on the battlefield. More of the story hunters coming out. So it does appear that Nox was going for a quick tier 2, as we're not seeing huge amounts of models coming out for him. So that's probably what's going to be on the go for them. No huge engagements going on at the moment as Commander Aracon is using this cover to his advantage, making sure that he's maintaining as far a distance as humanly possible so he doesn't end up getting killed. One patrol squad being wiped by these hunters just moving in about the waters and the trees, doing what they can. Second sentry turret attempting to be built there, but being quickly taken out. And like I said, the hunters don't really survive very well in a fair fight. But they're just keeping their distance, screening the enemy away as best they can. Orc transport comes down, and I assume... Well, what are you going to go for this time? What did you go for originally? Or did they all just die? Or have you put them somewhere else? Surely you've you got something else with your Orca transport uh, originally. He's going to let it sit for a little bit for getting a strike team out which is a tier 1 ranged unit for the Tau 
Well, to be honest, we don't really have any close combat units apart from the... Oh, well, obviously, Commander Farsight. And in Tier 2, they get a battle suit, which is also close combat orientated. Well, I suppose the Grey Vassar work as a hybrid of the two. But these, are, but these are just basically... Well, Destructing is basically your Fire Warrior squad. They're going to come over and see if they can kill this listing post before anyone sorts them out. One patrol team over here having a real difficult time being stabbed to death by the hunters. We're all being broken on the Grey Vassar here. That's not exactly killing this listing post with any degree of swiftness. Yeah, it does seem that Command Arakon is more or less built and bred for destroying infantry. Hunters getting a few shots off here and there. Are they shooting at Commander? No, they're not. Well, they're dead now. They won't be shooting at anyone. More Grey Vassar on the way here. Well, this Plus is upgraded, and when it gets upgraded, it comes out with a plasma cannon, which is ridiculously strong. But Aracon avoiding death by a hair's breadth. We are seeing a second Orca transport being brought down. So I'm running on the assumption that Commander Farsight will be coming out of there in a brief moment's notice. Temporary agency are being taken out. And can all these enclave Chaps and chapettes take on listing post. Uh, it's, it's almost as if it's... Yeah, I mean, brick by brick, they're taking it down. Ever so slowly. To another orca over yonder. Are they you just... Are you bringing out anyone at the moment? Doesn't seem like it. Nope, you just brought down more resources. So if you don't fancy building any units, you can just straight up. Um, uh, just give yourself a influx of new resources. There we go. Supply drop for the Enclave there. Nothing going on too crazy at the moment. We are seeing Tier 2 for Nox here. And a Mars Fabrica, as well as a Radar Tower, is being brought forth. So upgrades for the lads. Also, uh, also, no, it's the Radar Tower, the... Oh, what's it called? The Aircraft Building. Possibly. You have the Ogrin Gun Lungers. Coming out, their wonderful cigar hats. You quite like the jaunty slants that they have as well. These guys will just walk in and do some decent damage in close combat against these guys. If they're allowed to get so close. Things relatively calm at the moment. Current economies are 85 and 0. Compared to 80 and 43. And even though the Vestorian firstborn have... Deny this point over here. They've not really taken advantage of it by building anything on it. But those gun luggers are you just more range orientated, Ogrins? Those guns do seem to do a fair whack of damage. And yeah, that's what they are. They're a, they're a mean gun line to have. Although dying pretty quickly. Commander goes down. But I suppose getting into a gunfight. With the towel, even if you are big and beefy, isn't going to go your way, really. Revasa, seeing if they can go toe to toe from just 1v1. Wouldn't advise it. Wouldn't advise it at all. We're now seeing a. Oh, we're seeing a. Cilia. Charging on forward. It's only small, but it's got vehicle armor. Just going to see what it could do. Taking out a model or two while it's still alive. Imagine that. You get to the warp. And you see the Emperor. Oh, sorry. They, I suppose the Grey Vassar might see the Emperor. Because they still believe in him technically. Or the Tau God or whatever. They worship, I guess. But you, go to, you go to Tau Heaven. Hello, soldier. How did you die? Yeah, it was a really tiny tank. You get laughed at by all the boys at the Tau Pub when you get there. Assuming that the Tau have pubs. Assuming that they drink alcohol at all. But they are holding this fairly well. Upgrading their fire, fire base with some shooty bits on there. Also going for a sentry drone as well. When the Enclave upgrade their listing posts, does not give them extra green or... So does not give them extra blue money. It's just purely defensive, although the upgrades are a lot cheaper. At 75 blue and 15 green. Here comes the Infernus. Three flamethrowers of pure madness. And quickly going to burn everything to a crisp here. If these guys don't get a little bit of distance put between them. 
You can almost smell cooked blueberries tonight. Uh, say, heavy shock trooper. Oh, just, just one here. Go oh, here. Hello. A little cannon on your side. Just firing into everyone. Venice murdering everyone. No one's having a good time there. But yeah, he's just spinning around, just giving everyone a little bit of a lick of flame. And there we go. That was a, an unceremonious end to that gun line there. Could have run away if they wanted to. I assume they were hoping that the Sentry Drone and the Firebase were going to take the Inferno out, and it will eventually take it out. But... Oh, I suppose, oh that's because he's focusing on over over here. Farsight is out. Slicing up that Sentry Gun, although they did sacrifice a lot of health for that. And a Crisis Heavy Battle Suit. Potential to get two Flamers, but comes out standard with double Gatlin guns. Is going to jump on over, see what he can do. Heavy infantry armor as well. Comes with some missile launchers. So, practically, comes down, sees the thing, it dies in front of him. First born squad is coming to decap the critical location. Cosmos is on the critical location countdown victory at the moment. And very quickly, yeah. Light infantry, no match, especially because something they can fire at two models at any given time. Farsight moving around the flanks. Heavy shock trooper, no match for his terrifying blades. And a fresh squad of Grey Vasa. Seeing what they can do. Although the lightning strike fighter, eye on in the air. Also got a battle priest coming out for reasons. He will join another squad. Inspiring the men to greater feats of acts of carnage and mayhem. That's not a good time, are they? Second landing fire on the way out. Find the far side. Probably just get out of there. It's not where he wants to be. Incoming another orca transport. Want to send the boy home. Doesn't want to be there. No, he takes him out. Very unfortunate. Orca transport can also be killed as well. Before it summons another squad. In fact, it doesn't even bring another lad in. Are you taking up? You've got your research and development center. R&D. Also increase wave band transmission. So that's effectively their tier two. When they research that, they're able to get another batch of heroes. Every tier, they get an extra two heroes to choose from. Void shrinks are here. I'm looking for some... Uh, are you going to go for some Valera? Valeria. Some pattern, pattern bolters either way. Firing some patterns everywhere. As the Guevas come down over on this side. Battle heavy suit as well as Aracon. Victory countdown has begun. Back in the saddle once again. Come, my children. And the critical location countdown is back where it was at. Counting down once again the patrol team. Not long for this world. When the Cascan equivalents come and knocking. Come, Actually, that's quite a cool hat. Huh? I like that Let beast look. Pray. He's got no books. He's got no learnings. He's just got a huge chainsword ready to tear up any Xenos and traitor that he finds along his way. Mystic Post managing to finish that while you called Escalate Engagement Research before potentially being taken down. Lightning Fighter. Seeing if he can cause some issues as more orcas are just chilling out around the backside. Yes, well, if I have actually quite, quite doing all right. It's not falling down as quickly as most aircraft would in this situation. Might even get a squad wipe there. Well, not quite. There we go. Get that squad wipe on that grave asset squad. But being taken out of the air. We have got a Vanus assassin and some Hussars. Insert that Sabaton song that everyone knows and loves. Waiting for a flanking manoeuvre. Increasing the ranks of another Infernus tank as the assassin moves forward. 
And, I mean, I imagine assassins, especially against a faction that are so reliant on commanders, it's probably exactly what they want to see. We are ready, sir. Here come the winged hussars. And a quick, um, a, sorry, a, a quick charge animation there. And then knock a few lads back. And Rick and Morel quite aptly. As the void shrieks. Throw down a big zappy explosion. Or was that the hussars? One of the squads did that. Getting some stabbers on Aracom, but he does float away with grace and poise. He's only got one jump, and the horses don't need to jump. They've got four legs. Four legs and a whole lot of grit. Oh, no, he's got a second jump. Never mind, mate. They fall into the loving embrace of a fire base. And now the Hussars are pretty far alone on themselves. We're not seeing that much being summoned by the Orca transports. Do have another one over here. The white ones are for heroes, the red ones are for um, infantry or vehicles. Jump of the fancy building. Great Vance have been ripped apart. So we're not seeing that many that many units being built up at the moment. Do have Commander Shavastos. What are you? You have got flames on you. Flames and mines, by looks of things. Oh no, so that was a little thing he throws down that summons the Orca transport. I've got Infernus throwing out some ice. Morale being broken. Professor firing away. But you need to so, you need yeah, you need to bring forth there we go. Worried that you were gonna build more economy, but you've got plenty of blue money to play off at the moment. You've also got some green incoming, not sure where from. Or is that from the... So the Research and Development Centre, you can get some economy upgrades from there. So maybe that's where that's coming from. Christ yeah, like suit showing everyone why it is indeed suit made for battle. Get a couple more of these guys. And you've got a very effective infantry mulching unit composition. Death from all. And a fruitless charge there. They could have run away if they wanted to. But determined to not be scared of these guys at all. Which explosion, where are you coming from? Is there a, oh, there's a Vanus assassin in the middle of everyone. No one can see it. And just gelatinously moving these guys around. Shuffling them like a deck of cards. I mean, it's, it's an interesting... Uh, yeah, well, what is that? <laughs> this is your doom, Cosmos. In the grim darkness of the far future, people just float around. I assume it's a bug. I'm sure that's not working as intended. <laughs> What's it? What an odd situation. There we go. The back on it. The snaps out of it. That was a very long stun if that was indeed what it was supposed to be. Here comes a Remora drone. Where did you come from? Are you from the Sentry drone, maybe? Possibly. I have a way she's been spotted. I assume by that drone. And here comes another hero. To save the day, potentially. Assassin. Outmatched here by the sheer number of men giving her a good stab in. More Gravasa come forward. But it's uh, it's 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 going relatively all right for the tower at the Secured. moment, I think. I mean, they've got plenty of money to play with. It's just that the heroes keep dying. That's their main problem. Like by now, they could be recruiting loads of people if they wanted to. But they just don't have the recruitment potential, which must be very frustrating for them. We have some more great vassals. They've now got access to the pulse rifles as well, and some great vassy. We high can take on anything. Just so there we go. Got the hind gunship floating on over. And from the perspective of the Tau, we're going to have to rely on these chaff units until they can build up a more elite force. The Vistoyans, you've got, I assume that's tier 3 now because we've now got multiple onions on you. 
Maybe potentially. You can focus on those iron gunships. I mean, they've got the space to build up their own fighting forces here. Do not want to give the Tau much opportunity to reach that critical mass of heroes, though. Flames have been fired by sub commander Torchstar. Loves to command his subs. Historian Hunters. Been burnt by Blue Flame. But these hand gunships blowing up the Torchstar. No problem whatsoever. Not sure what he was doing there. He's dead. Much like all the ones that have died so far. We build up a second. Oh, I see. Right, so one thing as well is that, right, the reason why he's only had one hero so far is because for each additional hero, you need to build up another l orbital landing flare. So this must have been a case of not quite understanding how the tower work. So that's unfortunate. To be fair, the Tau are not exactly the most intuitive faction to learn. If you're giving them a go and you haven't practiced with them extensively, it is quite difficult to get them properly working. But I suppose this works as a, as a taster. I mean, we've still got a little bit of game left. Shavastos firing away with his little gun. Gradually damaging this hind gunship. Some more aircraft engine seers. Are you aircraft engine seers? Oh, just engineer. Don't mind me. There we go. Takes him out in mutual destruction. Enclave attempts to be rebuilt because they need the guidance beam, well, the orbital landing flare, and the enclave center to build up anything else. Well, without those, it's just. Yeah, there we go, GG. It's not the most extensive showcase of the Farsa Enclave. But like I say, we've got another video coming out the following day in which we'll see a lot more of the on-site, of, of, of the Enclave's uh, unit roster. And those are the previous games. It's just everyone getting used to how these factions work. So there we go. So thank you so much, boys, for sending that game in. And if you'd like to support the channel, look at the old Patreon. One pound of gets you once a game a week, and there is also a Discord, where Discord things happen. Thanks for the description as always. My name's Mr. Lunchak, which is always never short. Now I'll see you in a bit. Peace.